As you can see, <clears throat> I'm in the process of modifying my old kitchen um, by resurfacing and uh, adding new cabinets. So I tore out the old uh, range top and built-in stove that was here and uh, going to build some new uh, cabinets to accommodate a dishwasher and a freestanding stove range. One of the uh, interesting things about this corner, as most of you are familiar with, is this infamous blind spot. And people have used many of or came up with many of solutions to remedy this blind spot by putting in primarily things called Lazy Susans. And Lazy Susans work fine, but the problem is that that's like putting the old uh, proverb of putting uh, a circle in, inside of a square or a square inside of a circle. And you lose space and you still end up with things falling off and you're not able to uh, access them uh, back in the corners and they get trapped in there and then all of a sudden your lazy sous will not turn and the only way you can get to it is from your primary door here so what I came up with was not a lazy Susan well lazy Susan let me back up a little bit lazy Susan's might cost you 200 to 250 bucks it's usually two levels uh, now they, they also have uh, this uh, chrome wire frame and those are very expensive and they run in the order of uh, 300 400 and even 500 dollars. They look nice and they function nice but who wants to spend that kind of money just for a dead uh, corner in your kitchen cabinets. So instead of a lazy Susan I came up with the idea of calling it a lazy Bob. and. What I did first was I made some dimensions measurements and I found out that this quite naturally is roughly 20 inches. If you can see that. Length of the dead space is roughly 24 inches. And my primary cabinet door is about 20 inches by, let's see how tall it is. <clears throat> by 20 inches so 20 inches square now what I did was I came up with uh, the lazy bob and how the lazy bob works and let me show you and what I did was I took those measurements went out to the shop and and built basically two boxes a larger box over here that's oversized and a smaller box on this size now because I have this clear opening in this area here I'll oversize the box so that I can actually put it in from this end and once it's in there it's in there permanently unless I dismantle it manually on this end here this box fits perfectly in this area is slightly smaller so let me show you what this box looks like okay here's the box the box is about uh, 20 inches by uh, 19 inches and I can actually get it in this way but let me give you a little bit of uh, show you the, some of the construction I basically use half inch uh, sanded plywood on all four corners uh, this is going to be the back here and this is going to be the side that goes up against that side and on the front to access it I made these short and made this short so I can access it once I put it in there you'll see now everything around the sides are uh, half inch and on the bottom I actually use three four inch part of the remaining uh, one sided finished cabinet uh, software three four inch and I basically use pocket hole configurations um, screws and I end up using these cheap low profile ball bearing rollers and these are like a dollar each or something like that. I got them from uh, infamous Harbor Freight. 
and I bought them probably six months ago. Never could figure out what to do with them until I decided here. So let me show you how this goes in. Okay, we simply take the box. I have my normal access area here, and over here I have the storage things that you very use very rarely, like for holidays you need to pull out a big uh, tray or something like that. So this is something that provides storage, but it's something that you don't access on a daily basis. And the way this works is that imagine stuff in here. And it's two things. If the stuff is in here and I want to use this, I can simply, with the handles, grab it, pull it out, use everything I need to use, and put it back in. To access this panel over here, I simply, again, with some handles, I can access it. So I have plenty of access. I have a tall enough walls back here to keep things from falling off. Now you probably say, well what if something does accidentally fall off and now with this drawer or shelf oversized, this box oversized, I cannot get it back in there and I cannot get my hands over there to get to it. So the solution to that is you got to do some careful measurements here but the solution to that is to be able to tilt this within the space. And of course, quite naturally, you're going to have to remove the top drawer in order to do this, but you tilt, tilt, push it back to the far right. And now you can access anything that fell in this area, retrieve it, and put this back in place. Now the other thing, I'm thinking, again, because this is already open and I made this oversized, most cases you actually have an L-shaped cabinet here, a cabinet already sitting here, and you cannot get in from this area. So to do that, I will remeasure this to make sure that my dimensions, the height, is enough to allow me to put a box in sideways like this. Once I get it in sideways, and it's quite naturally it's going to be a much smaller box, because this is 20 inches from here to here. So this will be able to slide in again, tilt it down. Then roll it over. So this area, 20 inches would be since my door height is 20 and a half inches. So 20 inches would be approximately right here. So it's, you're still getting quite a bit of storage area that you can access. Two things when you need it. Push it back and take your primary drawer box. Put it in and you're done. So there's a solution to a lazy Susan dead man corner in the kitchen cabinet and it's called a lazy bob. Hope you hope you like this uh, tips and tricks.
this channel please hit the subscribe button but we would appreciate a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll try to keep them coming Thank you.